What is a service discharge? Well, about 100 years ago, there was a guy in Germany, a professor, his name was Maximilian Töppler, and he created something which is called the Töppler setup in order to reproduce service discharges. He figured that out, he was awesome, and now we can still use that. So if you want to set up in a laboratory a setup where you can measure partial discharges, the easiest one is Corona, the second one is service discharge. So let's see what he did here. So let's imagine I have a ground electrode, I have some insulation material, and I have some kind of a high voltage electrode. So just to visualize that, so imagine the following thing. Imagine this would be my ground electrode, right? And let's say my ground electrode is broken. So let's say that's my ground electrode. Let's say this is my insulation material. By the way, this is insulation material. I'm going to put it on here. And now I'm going to have this as a high voltage electrode. I'm putting it on here. And as soon as I do that and I increase the voltage, I'm going to get service discharges around here. Okay, so first of all, why do we have service discharge? Um, well, if I'm turning on the uh, high voltage over here, I'm going to get at least at this part, I'm going to get a more or less homogeneous field. Homogeneous field means these electric field lines are 100% parallel and they are they have the same distance to each other. Now, my electric field, my, uh, my, my electric field will change and it will become inhomogeneous and it will look a little bit like this. So the idea is that the distance over here would still be exactly the same, right? So now the question is, when is the line going like this? But it doesn't really matter. The important thing is that at this point, my electric field lines are in parallel with my surface, meaning they will create a force. The electric field lines are in parallel with the interface or with the surface, and they will create a, a force. Um, we're using, usually using 50 or 60 hertz when testing for partial discharges, right? So there will be a movement, and especially if there's a little bit of dirt and a little bit of humidity on the surface, then you literally have particles that could be considered, can, can be charged. I mean, uh, water is, is a dipole element. Um, and uh, if you have a little bit of dirt in there, so you have dirty water, you actually have something that can be moved back and forth and that can create partial discharges. And these partial discharges will create, happen here, right on the surface. So if you look at this and redraw that a little bit, so let's imagine I'm taking this insulation material and say, okay, this is my insulation material, just like I showed before, right? And now let's say I'm putting my electrode on it. What do I get? Well, I'm going to get partial discharges a little bit when I'm turning on the voltage and I'm exceeding the partial discharge inception voltage. So it will be a little bit like this and like this and like this, usually all around. By the way, most likely it will change the insulation material to a state where it looks a little bit like uh, like sand, like was, uh, you used a sandpaper on it. Here's a picture of it. And this is actually what I did in university. And you can see that the surface is a little bit rougher over here. Okay, but let's go back here. What happens if I'm increasing my, in, uh, my, my voltage here? These discharges will get longer, longer and longer. That is the reason in the, in the, in the, in the video when we talked about uh, a trend in PRPD, you can find this here, um, where we can actually say that um, if I'm increasing my voltage, uh, it actually goes up, the, the Q value keeps on rising, keeps on rising. Because what is going to happen, the longer I do that, it will actually try to reach the other side. And right, the idea was that I have a ground plate below here. This very ground plate is, is here. So everything here is ground, right? around it. And if I keep on doing so and I, 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 I don't watch out, I might get a discharge at a certain point in time and or I'm burning the material. The, the only question is what comes first. If I leave it long enough, I have to understand that maybe my material is burned or if I'm increasing the voltage too much, I might get a flash over. And uh, your high voltage source will not like that very much. Um, it's a huge transient, it's a discharge and uh, you can do this, but not for very often. Um, because you might destroy your high voltage source with that. So, um, what is another possibility of having um, service discharges? Well, another possibility of service discharge where they happen very commonly um, are cables. 
And here I have a cable. And this cable, in this case, is a medium voltage cable. And what do I have here? I have my, uh, my, my conductor inside. I have a um, uh, insulation material here. In this case, it is XLPE. And this is my outer semiconductive layer. There's another semiconductive layer in there, but let's uh, not uh, overcomplicate things here. And at this very point, I'm getting a setup again, which looks like a setup for a surface discharge. So let's imagine this, right? The, the outer part here is my semiconductive layer. This would be my XLPE, and obviously I have a conductor inside here, right? It doesn't stick out here, but this is usually the case. So what happens if I'm turning on the voltage and I'm exceeding the partial discharge inception voltage? Now I have to take orange, okay? And I'm going to have some partial discharges here. And obviously, if I turn it, then I will see some here and I will turn it again. So if I'm looking at that, I can pretend that I'm actually having partial discharge all over here because no, it's, it's round and um, we have partial discharges here, 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 here and all over. If I'm increasing my, uh, my, my voltage, they're getting longer, longer and longer. And very often you do not have to be afraid for high voltage cable or low voltage cable that you're having a flash over. Very often what you do first is you actually destroy the uh, XLP. Depending on the insulation material, the solid insulation material, it doesn't like temperatures much above 120, 130, 140 degrees Celsius. It starts to melt. Now, as a matter of fact, I have an awesome video where you can see how fast it melts just with Corona. You're going to find that here. Okay, so but going back, look, look, taking this, and if I'm looking at this from the side, that's exactly what I got, right? I got my conductor. Yes, it's not sticking out. The uh, violet part is supposed to be my insulator, and this would be my semiconductive layer. And once again, I'm having yeah, more or less homogeneous field. I'm saying more or less. Actually, it should be more. Actually, it should be 100% homogeneous. Ah, huh? well, once again, I was trying to uh, pretend that they have the same distances, but here, we're going to get this and this and this. And once again, you can see we have a focal point here. We have the, what is called a, a triple point. And at this triple point, we have an insulator, usually a good insulator. We have a bad insulator. In this case, it is air. And we have a conductor here. Same thing here, right? We have a good insulator. We have a bad insulator and we have a conductor here. So the bad insulator, it only in relation to the good insulator, right? So this could be a really good insulator and this, for example, could be oil. So then obviously it's not a real surface discharge, but that makes sense why people call it, sometimes call it an interface discharge. It happens on an interface, example given in a transformer. So before we conclude here, let's look at the PRPD diagram, right? So once again, we need a voltage. And um, obviously, I'm not going to increase the voltage now because that's too difficult for me to draw. So this is voltage. And at the same time, I'm having a Q in PC. And now um, let's imagine I'm starting here, 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 doesn't really matter. I'm starting with my partial discharges. And where do I get the first ones? To be really honest, it differs. But there's one thing about surface discharge that is really important or something I can remember. And I remember the following thing. Let me use this. So let's call, if I'm looking at my 360 degrees here of my sinus wave, I call this the first quadrant. I call this the second quadrant, the third and the fourth. Obviously it goes up to here, right? So zero to 90 and so on. And if I'm having surface discharges, very often they have the tendency to, I mean, usually I have a, always some kind of ground, right? Let's imagine this would be around zero, so I'm having some kind of ground here. And what I'm expecting to see if I have a surface discharge, I'm expecting to see a lot of dots that look a little bit like this, or yeah, a little bit like this. And they have the tendency that these dots stay in the third quadrant. Sometimes 
few of them go to the fourth quadrant as well. But very often, this is like only, I don't know, uh, 10 to 20 degrees that they like spill over. It could be 30 degrees, but it's not so much. They usually do not have the tendency to spill over too much. But this is like only, I don't know, 10% of the dots, right? So 90% of the dots are going to stay in this area. And um, at the same time, I'm going to get some dots here as well. So it's not that them, they start first, I just started to draw there first, right? And I'm having some dots here, and once again, some of them have the tendency to spill over. And very, very rarely, we have some that spill over here. But you know what? If you just say, okay, I'm only looking at the 90%, and where's the 90%, then you can say they're on the first and then third quadrant. So what I did here is, uh, sometimes they are, yeah, sometimes they are like that as well. So what I did here is, I said this one is a little bit bigger than this one. So this is very common for surface discharges, and this means that the, um, uh, that the conductor on where, that is involved in the triple point right here, this one, that this conductor, same here, then this is on ground. And if you do this, you usually have a higher cloud here, and a little bit smaller here. And the difference between these two it's hard to say, but it is a rule of thumb, right? We're doing oversimplifications here. We can get more in the nitty and gritty, but let's say it's a factor of three. Let's say something between two to five. So let's say that here I'm looking at the 90%, and let's say this is 100 picocoulomb, and then I'm expecting that this line over here is probably something around 300 picocoulomb to 500 picocoulomb. That could be some that's here as well, and obviously that could be some here, but I'm looking for the 90%. So this is what you expect if you do something like this. However, if you turn the thing around and you're, using, and you're doing what Tepla did, I'm going to use uh, green now, and you're doing what Tepla did, because in this case over here, my high voltage electrode is, uh, my, the, 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 my high voltage electrode is the very one where I got my triple point, right? This is where the partial discharges start in here. You will get a different diagram, and what you're going to get is, let's pretend this one stays, um, so I'm having a, uh, now imagine the, the green, you know what, I'm just saying it's something like this, you know. Usually, usually all the way to the, to, the, to the background noise. And then now you can expect that you get something which is, which is a little bit higher here. So all of this is covered with multiple points. So once again, in this case, I would say, okay, this one goes, let's say, up to 400 PC. Obviously, I'm having a very big logarithmic scale. And now, once again, I, mean, I said, like, the other one is three, five, six times higher. Let's say three as a rule of thumb. So I'm expecting that this one probably is around uh, 1,200 picocoulomb, so 1.2 nanocoulomb. And um, I'm not saying that it always must look like that, but just a rule of thumb. This is, if I look at one of these diagrams, I say, oh, that looks like a service discharge. I could mistake it for a void discharge, but obviously that's another video and maybe you want to watch that here. Thank you very much for watching and um, hope to hopefully see you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.